Okay, let's try have a look at the new Steam Link. So, if you've not noticed, Steam Link has appeared on the Meta Quest Store. So it's for Quest 2, Quest Pro, Quest 3, probably even the Quest 1. Not on the Picos as yet. Um, that's a missed opportunity, but we're going to cover it on Quest 3 anyway. Fire up Steam Link, you get the new deck UI sound interface. Shows your computer that's obviously uh, got Steam VR installed. It presumes you've already got that set up. But essentially connects your computer just as you normally would on a Steam Link. But it can boot you straight into Steam VR, which is awesome. And there's going to be a few things flashing up here once the actual overlays uh, come up. So I'm going to add the detail view to my wrist so I can keep an eye on what's going on. I'm just going to make that a little bit bigger. And uh, yeah, let's have a look at the latency situation. So covering the settings, you don't get image quality, as in like it doesn't prioritize image quality. So there is, obviously I'm in the Steam Climb Beta, Steam VR Beta. Um, I notice it pop up in the drivers. Um, sadly, it's Bradley's channel, the Discord, sort of there was a discussion if it's going to be a, a dongle or something, but it, it had loads of Quest 2 stuff in the driver file that was there, the actual configuration. So it's obvious that it's just come out for a quest. Um, the one thing I noticed was the actual encode video size isn't that big. It's 1344. So virtual desktop is still going to get you um, a lot more resolution on the encode size, especially with the godlike preset. Um, but this is, as I suspected, probably going to be tuned more for the, the latency and the feel. So you've got your normal Steam Link settings here. Um, Bandwidth, you can put auto or manual. Manual goes up to 350. Um, I'm going to do it for 150 so I can make a comparison between um, the Quest uh, Pico and now this as well. So, yeah, we've got encode resolution pretty much maxed out because the way Steam does this is if you lower this, it happens in real time, which is really nice. Um, the center is going to be really clear and everything else is foveated. So it's not like it just cuts off the image. It actually just obviously squeezes that resolution into a, a center viewpoint. So if you do have a complete potato PC, you can still have a good image, but only a very, very small window. So the encode size, obviously with this GPU, I can just max out. That's still not really high enough for like the Quest 3 lenses, if, if, if that makes sense. Um, it's borderline Quest 2, basically. You'd suspect about 18.3.2. Um, for the 3664 panel. So, um, carrying on here, basically there's not much else you can change. Um, bandwidth, encode size, encryption, much like VD, if you need that on your network, um, and an option for a debug graph, which I've got up here, which gives a, a really nice breakdown of exactly what's happening. So the megabyte, um, megabits per second, I should say, that you're at on the uh, streaming, your frame rate, loads of info related to the actual chain. Um, but the main ones you just want to look at is this bottom graph here, which is going to be the top bit is basically the highest reading you're going to get on this graph is what your latency is. So Steam is quite efficient in how they've handled the network stack. That was sort of um, some weird little painting they've done um, quite a while ago. I imagine this coming to fruition now. So the network stack is actually cut down on the PC side. Um, right now sitting in here, I'm at 20 milliseconds according to this after after decode. So let's have a quick look at Beat Saber and see what that's doing. Because as you know me, with streaming, I'm not too worried about visuals. Um, I just want that feel. So we are at in the actual um, Steam VR settings itself. I've left it at 100% resolution. Again, it's not going to match God Godlike preset on VD. VD is going to offer you much more control over the visual settings and offer a higher resolution. Um, not just render resolution as a 100% preset, but also the encode resolution that's based off that. So 100% in Steam VR is 2048 by 2048. Um, you do have real-time control of the refresh rates, which is awesome. So I can just switch between that. I can see that changing um, in my headset. I'm quite sensitive to 72 flicker, so I know the jump from 72 to 120. This is a good way for you to see that. You're not going to see it in a recording, but um, you get a bit of jitter at 72. And uh, still your 80, 90 is okay, but if you're on wireless, 120 is going to feel like what 90 sort of feels like on everything else. Um, so yeah, 120 hertz for wireless is for me. Um, and that also means obviously I don't push the visual settings. 
So it sort of goes hand in hand with Valve probably tuning this for the latency fill rather than visuals. So let's go into Beat Saber without too much waffling and have a quick look. Um, if we get back into the library and let's, let's do Beat Saber. <laughs> I've got the frame timing graph up here. This is the PC side. Um, normally it'd just be the green line showing you what your actual PC um, render milliseconds is. Um, obviously, as long as I'm below 8.3, I'm making 120 hertz. So visually, this is quite soft at this bit rate setting, so this is 150. Um, if I leave it to auto, my network generally sits around 250, and that's on a, a five gigahertz, it's nothing special. Um, there is still Ethernet that I could test out so I can max that and see what it look see what it looks like and look for the uh, latency. But setting a 150 target on the um, on the bitrate at least means I can give it a, a visual comparison to the other streaming solutions from Pico and Quest Airlink. So if I just, palm trees, damn. I'm not going to go onto a modded site because I can see what the difference is. Basically, I have no fail because I'm um, uh, cheating. What I'm going to need to do, apologise, I realise the quest recording situation is uh, not going to volume, uh, lower the volume, so I'll, I'll bring this down as much as I can, and hopefully you can still hear me, the quest microphone's quiet, I know that, so let's try this again, I'm not going to do a modern song. Yeah, so we got a lot of compression, and uh, not being able to see my... Saber is uh, a bit of a pain in the ass, but I'm not looking for that, I'm just looking at the digital quality at the minute. Yeah, so it looks okay, looks okay on my hands, that's um, what I mean feel on streaming, so it feels okay. Um, it's looking at like about 25 milliseconds after encode, but this is quite potato basically to me. Um, it really needs more bit rates, so I'll probably boost this bit rate up because this isn't really tied to the, the encode resolution either. And again, the joy of Steam Link is essentially you can get into your settings and do this on the fly. So um, I've already got the encode size maxed out. I'm just going to boost this up to 200 and just go back in. And I would say I'm stood up against the resolution. So. I guess we're on Steam VR. Yeah, we're still sort of we're under 30 milliseconds, but I'd say realistically, I need more visuals than that because, uh, again, for me to even contemplate using this, I wouldn't take that visual hit. I mean, you might as well play standalone if you're doing this. Um, controller feel, I don't think anyone's going to have an issue with the way Steam's done this. Very quickly, obviously, it's going to be up again. Watch if I can handle it. Streaming, so. Yeah, I'm not going to be an extra PC with Play Hope if you get the idea. Um, we're not really cracking at 30 milliseconds, so that's good. Uh, but we are, I would say, at the equivalent of sort of a medium preset in virtual desktop visually. Um, and obviously, that latency would come down if you're at that preset anyway. So. There's not much more I can do to the encode resolution. And again, if I lower that, um, that is probably going to help sort of the this PC chain, but the PC chain really isn't the issue on this GPU. I mean, if you look at the, the blue graphs going on here, that's likely going to be the encode time. So again, let's see what happens. I mean, this is going to look like crap, um, probably in the recording as well. Barely see my graph here. Yeah, that gets it like under 20 milliseconds. <laughs> but we're only encoding. A decent resolution, a very small window, so everything that's just to the side of me, I cannot. That's that's proper potato resolution on either side. Um, for Beat Saber, this is probably a nice little workaround, just having the window that you're focused on right here in sort of okay visuals. I mean, I can't read this, I can't read this, um, I can't, but yeah, everything above, below to the sides, I can't read. So <laughs> it's going to be a choice of what you go for. Um, it's nice that it operates in real time, um, but for me to try and tune this latency, I need some visuals. I mean, 
there's there's a point of a cutoff that I would accept visuals to use on streaming. If I was doing Half Life Alex of what that looked like just then, um, there's just no point. So I'm not sure if Steam is going to allow me to, to do this real time um, because what I want to do is raise that resolution up. I'll just go to 150%. Um, it's still not enough, like compared to what a godlike is, which is about, I believe, over, over 3,000, so 3,120 or something. Um, let's be stupid here. Let's just go to 200% on the on the driver um, Steam VR video preset. So just under 3,000, 200%. Um, and I'm going to give that a go, see what that looks like. Um, I may need to exit my game and then do that again, just so it actually uh, applies the resolution. All right. So we're still at that 200 megabyte second, um, or megabit. I keep saying that the wrong way around, but it was still at that 200 setting on the on the network. Um, so, okay, visually this has made a nice difference. Let's see how we're doing here, latency wise. So I've still I've still got a compression. It's still. Um, I don't know whether this is using the H.264 codec. I would imagine it is because I still see crunching in the in the covers. Um, I've not got band in as such. I don't know if they are using a 10 bit on this mode, but it doesn't feel. It's not as clean as uh, virtual desktop. And again, we're sort of under the 30 milliseconds um, on, the, on the latency. So again, this is 120 hertz. <laughs> I just like trying to break things live. So let's see that's what happens with the um, Steam link. Uh, it'd be the video settings. I don't think it's adjusting real time, but let's give it a go. Okay, yeah, it has. So that's pretty sweet. So I'd say about 30 milliseconds on um, sort of end-to-end. -end. So after decoding, Number of 30, 30 milliseconds of the decoding process, the green line, and that's how it's not coming across the board. The green line is all of the decoding. So that is the bulk of the time. There's not much we can do um, that because we're working on a standalone chip. Um, we're just up against that on any stream solution, really. It doesn't matter how good your network is. My network, even though it's only at Wi Fi 5 um, gigahertz, it doesn't necessarily matter because that's going to be. Three, four, five milliseconds at most. Um, so going to a Wi-Fi 6 isn't going to help in that situation until I saturate the bit rate. So if I go over 200, then the network just starts to crap out a little bit. Um, it will do it, but it's not going to be as stable, especially as I've got Google Home um, devices all around the room. Um, not on the same network, but again, the Wi-Fi 5 is not there, so I don't need to upgrade to Wi-Fi 6 just yet. But if I wanted to push the bitrate and not have that network introduce stutter, then I would need to do that. And Steam Link itself actually recommends Wi-Fi 6 or Wi-Fi 6E, but you don't necessarily have to have that as, as shown there. But yeah, latency-wise, I mean, a nice little trick if you are going to do it then is use 120 hertz. And that, I keep forgetting how to get back into many, that new um, encoded video size, you can just bring that down which does bring down the, the latency quite a lot. Um, obviously, less the decoder doing some clever foveated decoding, I guess. This is probably the way I'd have to play Beat Saber. And this is probably going to be the most responsive. Um, I mean, this is like saying about 20 seconds on the Steam reported um, latency here. And that is still at the 90 hertz, so I'm uh, I'm quite interested to have a, a further tinker with this off uh, off camera and see what I can actually get down to. So again, if you were sacrificing your visuals, your bandwidth, I mean, bandwidth isn't an issue. Like I said, if I go above 200, then it starts getting a bit bit slower. But um, that is Wi-Fi 5, so it, it won't make any difference to the the network time that I got between 60 or 205. It doesn't really make any difference there. Um, that will obviously carry on to the decoding stage of things as well. So, yeah, video encode size, target bandwidth, that's your control over your latency, essentially, if you're willing to adjust these lower and get lower visuals. But then also with, the, I mean, Beat Saber doesn't really care what um, resolution it's run that it runs at anything. So 120 hertz, um, 
yeah, it's going to be quite good, I would imagine. I mean, it's under like 20 minutes, I think. And to be honest, as a, as a display port snob, apart from any hitches you may get from network introduced stutters, um, this is quite cool as a latency response wise, so I'm very interested to see what Valve are actually going to do themselves implementing this at a hardware level. Especially if you can do something with that decoding, um, you can get anything better to decode than what requests do, just for the decoders are doing. Um, yeah, we're at 20 milliseconds according to their talk, according to their actual latest graph there, so that is after the decoding stage as well, so that is pretty damn sweet. Um, and again, I would obviously recommend you try this yourself and have a play. Um, and it doesn't make any sense not to because this is free on the Oculus Store. So, um, yeah, Valve have just killed Airlink by all of my by all accounts. Um, I'm going to have a few uh, digs in the drivers. I don't think you can go anything past what they've set, um, sort of encode video uh, video encode size. And is this my battery or not? Oh no, on video, <laughs> on video. <laughs> I don't know what caused that. I had a dropout, so you've seen that. So we're still up against streaming and any um, any outside influences. That could have been my network. That could have been the app crashing. That could have been anything. Um, that's sort of the, the downside for me on streaming is you're always you've always got something there to go wrong. Um, but setup wise, this is the easiest Wi-Fi streaming setup you can do as long as you've got Steam installed on your PC, Steam VR installed. Get the app on Oculus. It will connect to your PC. It will find it on the network, and you just input a code at a one time, so it knows what the app is pairing to the to the PC, and you're good to go. So this is the most simplest Wi-Fi PC VR um, streaming experience you can have, but it's not it's not trying to compete with virtual desktop in the in the visual quality front. So you've got a lot more control over the image. A few of the uh, obvious obvious features from virtual desktop with the the color pass through. Um, masking um, the Snapdragon upscaling, you've got all of those. So, yeah, pick your poison. Even now, I've got Airlink, virtual desktop. Pico hasn't got this yet, but you'd have the Pico streaming assistant as well. Um, and now you've got the Steam link. So, this is pretty damn cool. Check it out. Cheers, guys. <laughs>